Climate change is having a devastating impact on koalas. As well as struggling to find shelter and water, good food may become harder to find. But this forest, growing on Darug land in Western Sydney, is really special. It's a native forest time machine that's letting researchers from around the world peer 30 years into the future. This site is called Uke Face, a eucalypt free air carbon dioxide enrichment experiment. Sure, it's a mouthful, but its purpose is simple, to demonstrate how our changing climate could change our forests. And it's where Ben Moore is investigating how these changes might affect the koala's food. Ben, this is a, it's almost an industrial scale experiment. Big, isn't it? There's not many experiments, ecological experiments of this size uh, anywhere in the world, let alone in Australia. This is where we're trying to simulate a future high CO2 world. Wow, that's fantastic, Ben. So we're crossing over there, we're gonna walk into the future. By 2050, global carbon dioxide levels are expected to be about a third higher than they are today. But in this forest, they're not waiting until then. This experiment is dialing up carbon dioxide to the levels that we can expect to see in 30 years' time. So what is it? It's a huge ring that we're looking at here. It's a huge ring. We have six of these rings on the site. Six? Yep, three of those are, are elevating the carbon dioxide concentration and three of those are just pumping air in. So they're, they're our controls. Ah, uh, good science. Yeah. Grab a harness, yep. That'll let us uh, clip onto the man box. Ben is studying what these elevated carbon dioxide levels are doing to the eucalypt leaves. How's that? Nice and tight? Previous research in glasshouse experiments has shown significant changes in leaf chemistry. We get aboard. But neither eucalypt trees nor koalas live in glasshouses. Okay, going up, guys. Oh, this is fantastic. What a piece of kit. Wait, wait till you see the view up the top. So it's up here where Ben does his work. Look at this. This is like something from, I don't know, it's, it's magnificent. These it's great, isn't it? rings. So Ben, with all of this extra CO2, is it safe to be here? You're pretty safe, Tim, yeah. It doesn't affect our physiology at all. It does affect plants' physiology because plants are the ones that are, are feeding on CO2. When you're feeding on carbon, having twice as much carbon in the air suddenly is a big deal. And if it's a big deal for the trees, it might be even more significant for the koalas that feed on them. So are there any koalas on site? There's no koalas on site and uh, we know enough about koala nutrition to be able to interpret the changes we see in the chemistry and the nutritional content of the leaves to say what that means for koalas. Other uke face studies suggest that younger growing trees are more likely to be affected by elevated carbon dioxide levels. So you're looking for specific chemical compounds? Yeah, there's a few things. One thing is we look at the amount of protein there is in the leaf. For most animals that eat plants, the really important nutrient is protein. And it's protein concentrations in the leaves that, that tend to decline under CO2. On top of that, eucalyptus leaves produce a whole range of different toxins. One important group of toxins are what we call tannins. You may know them from tea, for example. If you drink yeah. a cup of astringent black tea, it makes your mouth pucker up. That's the result of tannins. And what tannins do is they bind to the proteins that are in the leaf and they make that protein indigestible. Right. And as atmospheric carbon dioxide increases, the amount of tannins in the leaf might also increase. So the koala is eating a leaf that's already low in protein and a lot of the protein that they're ingesting gets bound up to these tannins and they lose it in the faeces. So there's not much there in the first place and then there's even less that's actually available to the animal. So this is just an average impact which might slowly over time just tip the balance against koala survival. In any eucalyptus forest we have a lot of variation from tree to tree. One will be highly toxic and koala wouldn't so look at it twice and the one next to it might be delicious. If the average eucalyptus gets worse then those Patches of the bush that currently support koalas are going to get smaller and they're going to get fewer. 
So have a look at this. This gum leaf has been growing under elevated CO2 concentrations that are expected to occur about 2050. Um, it looks to me like a perfectly normal gum leaf to me. I can't tell the difference between this and any other gum leaf in the forest, but a koala certainly can. We can only hope that these leaf changes won't be as severe as Glasshouse research has shown, because carbon dioxide levels are continuing to rise. All we can really do is ensure that we get the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations back down because we can't control the way that the plants respond. Terra firma.